Siggy. Hi, Siggy. Hi, Siggy. <laughs> we Hi, are girls. so excited to have you on. Um, Siggy, you made us go viral. I don't know. Number what, one. You know what? It's, I, I, listen, I made you. You ladies are fabulous. You know what you're talking about. You've got great energy. And you know what? I think we're at a point in time in the history of the world where people are just so fed up with the phonies. Yeah. It's enough already. It's they want the real deal and they want to know. Listen, people sit at home and they watch this show and they're like, oh, my God, look at these idiots. My life isn't that bad. Right. Um, and that's not saying much about me because I was on it for I was a re reality star for many years before Housewives of New Jersey. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to be there entertaining you. Yeah. And I want to make it clear that the only reason why seven years later I am speaking out now is because the situation has changed. My children can no longer be hurt and um, I could say whatever I want. And the fact is, is that production um, keeps using um, that old lady that pretends that she's my age. What's her name? Marge, large Marge. She looks yeah. like Estelle Getty with those big glasses and the chompers. You know what I'm saying? Remember, well, you guys are young. Back in the day, they used to have the teeth, the, the hee haw right. teeth. The yes. Like the, that's what she reminds me of. But every season, I keep on getting, because I don't watch the show, but I keep on getting DM after DM and messages that this disgrace of a human being keeps bringing up my name. And I'm like, I haven't been on the show for seven years. Why is my name being brought up? I mean, yeah. What are they? What? And now that the situation has changed for my family, um, I'm speaking out. Uh, I would have spoken out seven years ago. I would have spoken out, but I had to protect Tyler, Olivia, Sophie, and Joshua. And now that they're protected and there's nothing else, um, I could, I could speak freely, which is, you know, my husband's like, calm down. It's about the children. I'm like, I know Michael, but I want to, I want to give it to who does this woman think she is waking up every day, ruining life after getting all this gossip and all day long, you could just see her. She's got to be at every event. She's got to show everybody, Oh, I'm still in charge, but you know, on the inside. Yeah. I'm just nervous. Right. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. She's a well, nervous. That's well, see. Yeah, I think people really wanted to hear what you had to say. It opened a door about housewives that don't speak out. Right. And you spoke out and people loved it. Right. So I'm glad that you came on. You know, I feel like I had to beg you for this part three because, <laughs> uh, you know, I know you're so busy. So I appreciate so much that you came on and so many people have a lot of questions for you. So yes. these, so all the questions that we're going to be asking, they are all listener questions Beautiful. and people just want to know your experience behind the scenes, your experience, the truth, when it comes to, you know, the whole Margaret stuff. And I know that you were an instant hit when you were cast on the Royal Houses of New yes. Jersey. Ratings, and ratings, Roxanne were high. When I yes. left the show, they declined. Now, I'm not saying it by any means. I was the star of Housewives of New Jersey. We yeah. know it's Teresa Judice. Mm -hmm. Without you, Teresa, you don't have any storylines. Without Teresa, you don't have a show. So let me make that clear. Yeah. But I added a sense of fun, um, sogginess, whatever you want to call it. I was the one who was getting on the floor, saving every scene because no one else would bring it but yeah. Teresa Judice. Yeah. No one. When the producers used to stop us and whisper, you guys, you're boring. We'll cancel the show. Let's go. They knew that there are certain housewives that need that paycheck, that they were going to go bring it, but bring it with a moral compass. Not like the other one who would go into the garbages to find out, you know, what your father did with your mother 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, there's a limit on that. For if sure. you didn't, if you didn't leave when you did, how long do you think you would have lasted with the show? If I didn't have the situation of Margaret reaching out to my husband's ex-wife, who um, I can't talk about. I would never do that to my children. And mm -hmm. she's no longer, she, she, unfortunately, um, she lost her battle with cancer and she's not here. Um, anyone who's battling cancer, it's off limits. Mm -hmm. It's off limits. Anybody who's battling Cancer, cancer, I, it's off limits. You, you never know what that person is, is going through. And it's something that is just a horrific thing. And I pray every day that they find a, a cure for that. So once that happened, um, I knew that I was, you know, it was, it was, I had to choose. It was either my children, fame, 
or my wonderful husband and my beautiful kids and my family unit. I made the right choice. And God, yeah, has, God has rewarded me um, in the last seven years in huge ways, in huge, huge ways. I have been rewarded because I tell everybody out there who's listening, life is about choices. You have to make the right choices in life. And when you lead with your heart and you have nothing to hide and you lead with your soul and you only fear one, one thing, it's Shmai Sorella Donai Lahenu, only God. I did the right thing. Now the situation is different. My children are no longer young. They're no longer in, in high school. Um, and they're all out there killing it in, in the real world. And now I'm able to say, hey, I've been waiting for this for a long time. And I'm going to speak out. And no one's going to silence me. Now that, the, now that I'm out and there's nothing to ever hurt my children, forget about it. You can't stop. No one can stop me. No you one. go, girl. No you one. let it out. <laughs> so you mentioned paycheck. So earlier you just mentioned paycheck. Yes. I have to ask now I, I'm curious, how much were you paid your first season on? Well, I don't know about other, other um, franchises. I'm only talking about Jersey. It's embarrassing to say, cause you have to be an idiot to do the show. Like you have to have, you do the show for two reasons. You want fame or you need the money. The first season housewives make $60,000. Now, yeah. after taxes, that's about 30. After hair extensions, makeup, <laughs> a wardrobe, um, going to parties and having to be photographed with people that you have to pretend you're friends with everybody, it's you're drained. You are probably losing $150,000 the first year. Wow. Wow. Are you, are you asked to like host events or do you feel pressure to host events? No. What happens is, is that we are asked by production to hang out. We have to hang out because listen, you're doing a show about five, six, seven women. And all those women really couldn't give a shit about one another, but you're doing a show. I, I am I allowed to curse? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I didn't want to get you guys in trouble. Okay. So okay, like you, you, they never hang out in real life. They have to hang out once or twice. So to have dinner, like I would get a phone call from production and says, do you want to have dinner with da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh, all of a sudden you make plans and you have dinner and you're photographed and, you know, it's always to get the fans excited. Look at them hanging out. You know, um, I don't watch the show, but I know that all the friendships on the show are not authentic. Mm -hmm. I know that Dolores and Teresa's friendship is authentic. And I know that Teresa loves Jen Aiden. Their friendship is the real deal. She loves her. So I don't know about all the other friendships, but let me just tell you something. Um, I do know that some of the friendships happened because they were forced to happen. And that's why I say to any housewife that ever contacts me, don't contact me. It's not a good look for you to be talking to Siggy Flicker. I'm trying to protect you. Yeah. I don't need the money. I got the money and I already got the fame. There's nothing in it for me. Yeah. I'm not trying to get back on the show. I would lose my, I would, it, it, it's a disgrace for me. I would never, ever work in an atmosphere with this production company that tortured my soul seven days a week for five months of filming. Never wow. in a million years. So I'm not doing this for, I, there's no ulterior motives. But what happens is, is that when you go out to dinner and let's say I go out to dinner with Chantel and Roxanne and we're out there. You're making your, you're, you're building your platform. A lot of these housewives use that platform because they want to get sponsors. Yeah. So what will happen every day? I get Siggy. If we sent you something, would you post it? And I'm like, no, yeah, I won't post it. I, 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 I don't even tag what I'm wearing. I don't care. Yeah. I post yeah. my stuff and then I go on during my day. Even the stuff that you're posting, it's all phony. It's yeah. like, okay, kids, let's get together. Let's post. Okay. And then everybody take off your makeup and let's just relax. Um, it's a, it's a hard job and it's an exhausting job, but you'll see housewives like Teresa, they're not at every event. They're not there um, having to hang out. It's you're with your family. So you know w which housewives are really in it for the right reasons, the authentic ones. And the ones are like, okay, I'm desperate for money. I got to be out and I got to show everybody that I'm out at every Margaret. event. <laughs> <laughs> and you're tagging your, I mean, it's just, you, you, we know the insiders, most yeah. housewives will tell you, look, talk to Dolores, ask Dolores how much she loves to go to events. Yeah. I feel like she hates it. Yeah, ask her. It's, <laughs> it, it's like, 
you got to put on the lashes and you got to go out there and you're talking to people right. who you are. It's like you don't even care, bottom yeah. feeders. And yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh my God, I love you. You're my favorite. You're my favorite. You're my favorite. It's like in the beginning, it's like, oh my God. But then you realize they say it to everybody. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 everywhere I go, you are my favorite. I'm like, I was your favorite. Yeah, yeah. we love Teresa. We love Teresa. I'm like, that makes more sense. Like, you know, okay. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's 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 a job, and and you do not get paid for the amount of work, um, the amount of butchering, and the amount of fear that you are ruining your family at the end of the day. How about season two? Season two, they go to one twenty. You go from sixty to one twenty. Can you negotiate more, even if like you let's can? But up. but Bravo has all the power. Okay. When yeah. they need somebody, listen, if you're, a, and I always go back to Bethany, Bethany created a clause for all housewives. Why? Because Bethany was actually the one that beside off the show, she made a ton of money because she's something called smart. Yeah. She's a hustler. Mm -hmm. She talks to talk and walks to walk. Now I've mm -hmm. never met her. I don't know her. I, you know, I've never had a conversation with her, but I have to tell you, I have a lot of respect for her as a business woman. So you see a lot of these housewives one season, they'll start a jewelry thing and then it's gone or you start uh whatever it is. And then it's gone. It's cause it's a fake thing. The gorgeous a career all place. There's no yeah. meatball restaurant. It's not. So in Beth, after Bethany started making a lot, a lot of money, there was a clause that Bravo put in the contracts that if you start a product and it makes money, we get a percentage of it. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, well, yes. I, I knew that mm -hmm. knew after that? her. Yes. So after her, because she was so brilliant. Now, um, the good news is, is that there is no other Bethany. Oh, <laughs> well, there is at least Vanderpump. I mean, but I don't know if Bravo is yeah. making a percentage of her restaurants, but there right. is she no Bethany. before. Right. Uh, they were old. Yeah. They got the contracts yeah. when they were actually good. Um, right now, there's really no upside to anybody signing up to do the show. You are not protected. You don't make any money because you have to not take the salary. You have to remember, you have to pay Uncle Sam. You have the government um, yeah. and you're out there. Not, everything is about image, 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 hair extensions. I got, I got to post this. I got to post that. It's like, exactly. oh, at the end of the day, all you want to do is hang out your PJs and uh, shut the fucking world up. Yeah. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> People always say, Siggy, why don't you have your comments on? I'm like, really? You think yeah. in my life, I need noise in my life? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Why do I care what anybody thinks of me? I mean, really, are you in my life that I would care? Right. So, no, so you Siggy, you won't, my you won't come to Bravo? Goal, think, and my, my close network of friends. Other than that, you think I care to let you comment on my post? What yeah. do I care? I put up my shit and then I continue my day. Yeah. That's the best way to be. Well, I was going to ask, so do you guys get paid during filming or after the show airs? Like, how does that whole thing work? Do you remember? Um, I don't really remember. You would have to ask James Leonard that. Um, I think it comes in installments. Okay. Um. I don't remember that. Do they pay for your vacations at all? Yes. When you're filming, everything is paid for. Meaning, oh. you know, they, they send you an Uber. Yes, you're not paying for anything while filming. If you're going to Acapulco to film or Italy, they pay for it. That's part of the, the budget that the production company gets to film the season. The housewives well, are not paying for that. Then why do some people act like I'm hosting this for you guys so I get the best room or I get right. this? That comes into fake storylines. Okay. Mm. So what, what happens is, is that we go away on a trip. Yeah. Um, and if there's a trip, they're like, okay, Siggy, you're, we're in Boca and you're hosting everybody in Boca. I mean, do you really think that I, you know, I took him to my restaurant, New York prime, where <laughs> my water broke when I was having Joshua, I've been there for 25 years. I had to get everybody to be in that restaurant. We were supposed to come there at seven o'clock. We had camera issues. We showed up at nine o'clock. My friends were like, I got a babysitter to be here on a Monday night. Oh gosh, yeah. And then I walk in and I'm like, hello, Pam, Candace, <laughs> Lori, I love you. Hi, David. Hi. And we were starving. And I went over to a, a, a friend's table and I picked up an onion ring or a French fry. And then the next day they try to make that a storyline. Siggy walks into a restaurant and just starts screaming at the top of her lungs. Mm. you can't you can't make this shit up wait so what so to clarify so that scene was a scene a lot of people talked about because you walked in i i remember i actually rewatched melissa went in in a confessional and she says siggy's being a lot yes. but uh, were all those people did they close the restaurant down and you you told all your friends to go to that restaurant yes. 
It's exactly wow. that. See, listen, you can't blame Melissa because if there's not any a storyline, there's not a storyline. So they say producers would say to Melissa, don't you think Siggy was being a lot? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, they, everyone wants their paycheck. They just want to do a lot of people just say, just tell me what to say and I'll say it so I could get the hell out of here. I remember Joshua coming down. He was upstairs filming and I was downstairs. And Joshua, I wish he'd walk in right now so he could, he'd say, mom, they want me to tell everybody that we don't get along and that you're um, up my ass and you're, I said, Joshua, I'm tired. They've been here for five hours. Just tell them whatever they want to hear so wow. they can pack up and get the hell out of the house. Well, that's so sad. Cause that's like your motherhood, you know? And then, and they're like attacking yeah, that, but right. if you didn't care, you, you didn't care, but. But there's, it comes to a point where you're just exhausted. But the thing is, is that the person that gives them the most usually becomes the storyline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I always give the most. I don't know how to tone it down. I don't have a button that says, okay, act normal. I'm not normal. So everywhere I go, it's a height, heightened, like, I just want to have fun. Yeah. I want to have fun. So walking into that restaurant on a Monday night at nine o'clock, go to any steak restaurant in Boca Raton on a Monday night, maybe now after COVID that a thousand people a day moved to Florida. Yeah. It's not full. Right. I had all my friends fill it up so the restaurant would look full. Wow. And I'm very good friends with, with, with the owners there. And so when you saw that scene, me walking in, it was all my friends, Amy Sue Hardwork, Pam Levine, Candace Shaw, Lori Consker. Everybody was there waiting for us to come in. Yeah. And they had been waiting. So you have to, of course, be extra when you see them because I'm extra on a good day. But if, you know, if I'm coming in and I see, I'm like, Roxanne Chantel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I love you guys. Okay, <laughs> Order the hash browns and make them burn. Burn yeah. them like, a, and I get excited. I'm walking in, I'm filming a show and I see all my friends who I went to mommy and me with that we grew up having kids with that yeah. I've known for 25 years. I'm excited. So right. now they used something so positive and nice to trash me and make it like I just go over to people's plates and grab food off their plates. That's when I called James Leonard and I'm like, James, we need to call the executives of Bravo. I, 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 I know what they're doing and it's disgusting. Like, come right. on, let it go. Like we already have drama naturally brewing up. Yeah. There was drama between me and Margaret from day one. Yeah. Me. I could take on Margaret. I could take on all of them. I can't take on production. I yeah. cannot. I, as a human being, cannot take on what they're going to do with the edit in the editing room. It's not fair. It's yeah. not fair to bombard me every day. It was, I couldn't wait to run away from that show. I couldn't wait. It was just every day I have to deal with production. Let me just fill my scenes. Yeah. Like, Margaret, who just met Teresa's mom, production bought a reef and had her do something at the Boat Hotel and Resort. Oh, no way. She never, ever met Teresa's mom. She just met Teresa seven days prior to filming that scene. But wow. why do you think that the viewers are even going to buy into that? Are you guys that stupid? Well, I believed it. I did too. I thought that she was nice for doing that. Now, do you see what an edit could do? You think Margaret sure. Josephs went to Florida and said, huh, you know, you know, okay. I think that we should buy a reef. That was all production. Bought the reef. Wow. Bought everything. Wow. Wait, you Listen. know how, you know, how, you know, how you came in and they told you to go after Teresa. Do you think they didn't tell Margaret to do that because yes, they just wanted they you? They told Margaret to go after me. But the difference um, is if I really had beef with Teresa, I would have went after Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I met Teresa, I all you have to do is smile when you're with her. There is nothing about her that comes. She is the most, she's the nicest girl. All she wants to do is have fun. Yeah. And the whole time. I love your lips. What kind of lipstick? Oh my God. That's a great idea. Um, she was not, we were planning Dolores's party. She could have been like, listen, I've known Dolores all my life. You've only known Dolores for a year or whatever it is. I know what. She was like, Siggy, whatever you want to do. I said, well, I just think we should do like a Dolce Gabbana theme, like the red with the, yeah. with the cheetah. She's like, I love that. I mean, she's not. You, I'm like, how am I supposed to, I'm supposed to go after this girl? Now, yeah. when they said to Margaret, go after Siggy, they introduced Margaret on the show as if Margaret and I were friends and I brought yeah. her. Home. I'm like, okay, guys, Siggy Flicker would never be friends with Margaret Josephs. 
not in this lifetime, not if I come back as a panda, not if you believe in reincarnation. It ain't happen. She's not a girl's girl. She's yeah. not fun. No. She's like a girl that's just like, okay, I got I gotta, okay, what are we doing here? Okay, I need, I need dirt. I need that. I mean, she her soul is, I don't want to. I, I was just going to say something political, but I'm not going to go there. I'm sorry, girls. <laughs> okay, but um, not, not she's just, not not anybody that I would ever ever befriend. She's never seen the inside of my kitchen. We've never been out to dinner together. My husband never met her husband, but she's being introduced on the show as my friend. Another fake storyline. What well, more I, can I give you? I have to follow up. So yes. that's shocking. What you said about production buying that for. Teresa saying it's from Margaret. Okay, Roxanne, let's go further. Yeah. Who do you think bought the cake? Production did too. But do you think I do you think I bought it? <laughs> yes. I thought you bought the cake. Okay, I swear to you on my children's life, I didn't buy the cake. Oh my gosh. Wow. Did you decorate the cake though? Did you I did like... not decorate the cake? <gasps> oh my gosh. So I, call, I called up the place that the production asked at the Boca Hotel and Resort, because I'm also a member there. They said they're going to make a cake. Production paid for the cake. And they said to me, Siggy, what about Melissa? And I said, well, she's got a beautiful store and, you know, make it pinky and, and envy and all that, all that stuff. Yeah, I gave them ideas. I didn't go and look at it and, you know. Well, well, okay. So I want to, I definitely want to touch on the cake thing, okay. but when they asked Margaret to do that, you and Dolores were so upset that you guys weren't there. Was that real? Were you and Dolores really upset that you yeah. guys? We, were, okay. we found out I would have been my pissed. friends were on the beach that day. Yeah. My friends are calling me going, Siggy, they're doing a whole scene, a memorial for Teresa's mom. Now I didn't know Mark, the storyline was going to be faked out. And I went, wait, Dolores and I are at raw juice. And they're excluding us. We actually knew Teresa's mom. Yeah. We actually went to the funeral. And they're excluding us from that scene. I Do said, you think that was production doing that? Was that well, production? It was 100%. Wow. Oh, my gosh. When I tell you that Bravo executives, Bravo and production are two separate homes, two separate things. Bravo executives had no idea that I was being bullied and harassed 24 seven. That's why in my resignation letter, I had to use words as hostile work environment. It was the most hostile work environment ever to work on that show with that production company. Every single day, you knew that they were coming at me every single day. Did you have a sit down with them and tell them your frustrations, how you're feeling? Yes. And, and I had to do it with, it, with James say? Leonard present. I said to them, why, 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 why? And they would gaslight the whole situation. Wow. No. They would gaslight the whole situation. Don't worry. It's not going to be like that. Don't worry. It's not going to be like that. Yeah. I knew well, exactly. Now I'm very, and I'm not, I'm not tooting my own. I am tooting my own home. I have a very high IQ. I'm very smart. And I trust my gut instincts. My gut instincts are always on point. I would go to Dolores and say, Dolores, I'm so frustrated. I'm not letting them get away with it. Now, Dolores is smarter than me, um, knows how to play the game. And she'd be like, Siggy, just roll it off your shoulder. Just let it go. Who cares at the end of the day? I said, I care. I'm about principle. I, when I see somebody doing something wrong, I have that personality where I have to write that wrong. I'm sorry. It's like, no, they're going to bash my reputation. You want to have a storyline about me that's the girl is crazy in a good way. The girl is in love with herself. Whatever you want to do, do it. If it's true, do it. I'm going to own it. But you're going to go and make up these storylines. And then I have to go on watch what happens live where, you know, Andy Cohen's like, well, Siggy, do you think you over-exaggerated in this situation? And I want to say to him, if you only knew mm. how much to did I over-exaggerate? No, because if you put any other human being in the situation that what they did to me and after me, they don't do it to anybody else like they do it to me. Like yeah. they did to me. Um, it was 100% bullying on the highest level every single day. So there was a scene I just saw. I, I'm sure you never watched. I don't know if you did. Real Housewives of Dallas. No. The There was an OG. Her name was Leanne. And something I forgot happened with another girl. And at the reunion, she says, yeah, I didn't reach out because producers asked me not to call her. 
And Andy says, don't blame that on production. Production doesn't ask you to do that. He said something like that. Does Andy not know what's happening with production? Um, I would say no. he doesn't know what's happening. What, 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 let me just say this. Andy Cohen was nothing but nice and, and, and pleasant. When I resigned, the first phone call I got was from Andy Cohen. He goes, I am very sad to hear this news. And I said, Andy, I'm so sorry. Thank you for the opportunity. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's not that he doesn't know. This is a man who's created a franchise. He collects his checks and he watches dailies. So yeah. the production company will send him footage and he'll give notes on the footage. He's not involved in the day-to-day -day operation. He yeah. doesn't know what production is scheming. Mm. They have the authority to do whatever they want. Yeah. And they only send footage over to the executives and the executives will give notes on that footage. When I called the executives and we were on the phone and I said what was being done to me, I can't explain to you how Bravo executives bent over backwards to try to make me happy. Oh, wow. They would call production and say, listen, that scene in, in, in at New York Prime, I want you to send it over to Siggy. You know, like, I, I can't even tell you how nice Bravo exec executives were to me. I have no problem with Bravo the house. Mm -hmm. All my issues came from this production company and the producers, the slime that was hired on the show to create a fake storyline and false narratives and then try to bury me under the sand, which had backfired. It never happened. Do we know what other production company, like that production company, uh, which other franchises they produce? Only New Jersey. Only New Jersey. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, I don't know how other production companies work. And it's not every producer. Yeah. yeah. It's not this production company produces a lot of shows. And I'm sure they have wonderful producers. I am talking about the scum that I worked with. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about going to a restaurant, going to a restaurant in Brooklyn with Dolores. And at that time, I had set her up with Dave Principe and my husband and um, Teresa and a few other friends walking into an Italian restaurant in Brooklyn and looking over and seeing the head producer having dinner with Melissa and Joe Gorga. Oh, and wow. I never had dinner with the producers. So Michael they had and I never. Now, Michael and I were never asked to have dinner. So right now you have the cast watching you have dinner with the Gorgas. It's like haunting. Now, you don't think that I'm thinking in my mind that producer is going to protect those two in the editing room. That's yeah. what I'm going through my mind. Yeah. I don't know what's going through anybody else's mind. And I looked at Michael and he goes, Siggy, you wanted to go on this show to make Jersey great again? It's not happening. They don't want Jersey to be great. They want to stay yeah. in the swamp. And I said, Michael, that's not right. That's not right. And you know what? I don't let things go. I don't let things go. That's one of my flaws. I do not let things go. Did you approach them? Did you? When no, you but they said, hi, hi, hi. It was very, <laughs> very odd. I'm thinking, and that head producer, oh, disgrazia, disgrazia. You have to understand when I'm saying these people, jealous, jealousy, a lot of, a lot of jealousy, a lot of like, oh, she picked her favorites and those favorites were always, always, always protected in the editing room. Now, why does it bug somebody like me and not somebody like Teresa? It's a very simple reason. Because Teresa never watched the show until recently. Mm -hmm. Teresa yeah. never watched the show. I used to say to her, Teresa, she goes, who cares? I yeah. film, I go home, I collect my money, I take care of my four beautiful girls. I don't watch it. So now I want you to understand that the people who are against Teresa, when they know that Teresa doesn't watch the show, what are they going to do? They're going to say, listen, we could do whatever we want. Yeah, dumbass, and that's dumbass. Dumb, they're, they're not me calling her dumbass. Them calling her dumbass doesn't watch the show. Yeah, right. And and, and that, that's she's not on top of it. Gorgas. Yeah, that's what we say. The Gorkas have been doing. They've been trying to control this narrative because Teresa doesn't watch. And when the reunions come, it's like her first time seeing clips. That's what I'm so trying to say. She's like, "What the hell?" And yeah. I, and I said to her, Teresa, you need to watch the show. Yeah. And she goes, why? I know a producer. Now you have to understand something and I don't, I don't want to cross, but I know when I was filming with Teresa, I know that Joe Judice, I spoke with him and the girls, no one in her household liked production. Mm. 
Wow. Roxanne and Chantel, call her after we do this and verify that. No yeah. one, they didn't trust them. They yeah. didn't trust him. And I remember speaking to Joe Judice on the phone and he said, Ziggala. He never called me Siggy. It was Ziggala. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you trust those rats? Don't trust the rats. Yeah. Not, not the girls. Nobody. I mean, you know, they blamed a lot, a lot of what happened to that family on production. Is the producer that was with Melissa and Joe at dinner, are they still on the show? No, she got fired. Oh, I think okay. it's the same one that we're speaking. No, it's about. not the same. Oh, one. okay, okay. Yeah, wow. okay. she got she got fired as well. Yeah, but, but yeah, she got fired. When it, did she it, get fired? Was right? it with you? immediately after I left? She was dismissed. Wow. Uh, what I think happened, and I can't say. I think that after I left, there was, bam, like they 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 got in a room and said, "Listen, we can't have this happen again." Because this girl's letter, my resignation letter was very strong. And now if anybody reads a resignation letter, I mean, I, I can't, it's just like America, uh, uh, the, the American people, it's like, you'll watch a reality show, but you won't read, like in the resignation letter, it states that at the reunion, I knew, you could ask Michael, I knew I was never coming back. So at the reunion, I was like, listen, listen, you disgrazia of an animal, Okay. You big hee-haw looking thing. You are everything that I have raised my children not to be. Mm. You're a cheater. You're a liar. You're a fraud. You have no moral compass. I was coming strong, finally able to release my feelings. And I said, you tortured me all season. You came at me. You came at me. And I was leading her down a road, hoping that I would break her. I said, you came at me every day. They whispered in your ear, you came at me. She goes, that's right, I did, because production told me to come at you. All of a sudden, in the middle of reunion, cut, camera's off. Not everybody's like, oh, my God. I broke her where she admitted in reunion. You'll never see it. They'll never air that. That producers told her to come at me. I wrote it in the resignation letter. In the resignation letter, I said it was very evident in, in, in at the reunion when Margaret said producers, and, and you could read it. It's online. It, it's yeah. it's public. We'll share it's it. Yeah, we should. And um, and I said I broke her, and they she came back and said I have to apologize for that. I made that up. Producers didn't say anything. I'm like, yeah, okay, sit on it and rotate. Yeah. You're a liar. And now. Oh, so she tried to say she made it up. After that, they whispered in her ear because they had to cover their asses. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yes. But then you said you were hoping it doesn't happen again. But Margaret is close with producers on the show. Yes, yes. because the producers who are not on the show still call. There's still a lot of friends. It's It's a whole... It's like Washington, D.C. It's a whole swamp. It's yeah. a whole network of people who have been there forever. You got 90 year olds, no term limits there. They've been there forever. They know the thing. Now, if I'm a producer and I want to make a good show, I'm going to walk. I'm going to say to Chantel, uh, can you say this about Roxanne? And Chantel would say, get the hell. I'm not that girl. You yeah. Go, Roxanne, Roxanne, would you say this about Siggy? I'm sorry. I, I might not like Siggy, but I'm not saying that. You go, you needed that girl. When they go to Margaret and says, can you do, do, do? She's like, of course I'll do it. Whether okay. it's true or not. She is that girl, no moral compass, no moral compass. Don't forget, Margaret Joseph started her life with copyright infringements. I mean, come on, Vineyard Vines and Lily Pulitzer, you guys have to do your research. Put one and one together. She was sued. She got sued. To copy the whale. Her, all her clothes, if you ever look at her McKenzie, whatever her company that is bankrupt, doesn't make, uh, whatever it is. It's all copying Lily Pulitzer and, 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 and it's nothing is original with her. Yeah. She's a frustrated woman. She came here to this country or she was born here. I don't know. Her mother's in the, and she's like, I'm going to have the American dream by stealing it from somebody else. There's nothing original. She's always trying to recreate herself. I'm the only one who has enough balls to say it because now I can, there's nothing she yeah. can do to my children. Yeah. yeah. She wants yeah. to come at me. Let's meet on a platform where they can't protect you in the editing room. 
Bring it on. Oh, I like it. Let's, alvai, let's, alvai. let's all do it. <laughs> yeah, alvai, shma Yisrael, alvai. Yeah. And you know, I keep on bringing the fact I'm Israeli. I'm Israeli. Yes. I was born in a bomb shelter during the six day war. And I bring that up for a reason, not because of any other reason, but if you ever go to Israel and we'll talk about Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East where there's a gay pride for a week. I had Andy Cohen actually be the ambassador. He uh -huh. went and experienced it and texted me and said it was wonderful and visited Yad Vashem. But the reason why I'm bringing it up is mo most Israelis are very confident. Um, when you are Israeli, you always have to turn around because every day there's false narratives created about the only democracy in the Middle East where a woman doesn't have to cover her head and doesn't need to have a male chaperone in the streets. Women can be free. Women vote there, whether you're Arab, Christian, Jewish, whatever you believe in. Yeah. Everybody, you could be a gay person and you're celebrated in Israel. You're not stoned to death in Israel. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is most Israelis, we what does that mean? We don't give a shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throw whatever you want. Tell us we're an apartheid state. We know it's bullshit. Like, come on, Sababa. It's like, bring it on. We yeah. don't care. So that's why when I was filming um, New Jersey Housewives, all the drama that I experienced with Margaret or anybody else on the show, no, it was fine. Yeah. You could have showed that and it would have been fine. Yeah. But what production did was artificially create that drama and then protect the people who are bullying. So I was being ga gaslit. So when you yeah. meet somebody and they say, Roxanne, guess what? I don't like you and I don't like your kids and I don't like your political views. And I'm like, you know, after a while you say, you know what? I don't give a shit what you like. And they're only saying, I don't give a shit what you like. They're like, well, why are you being so mean to mm. this girl? They're not understanding that the bully who's gaslighting you is yeah. being protected in the editing room. So why yeah. should I allow that and allow this girl to continue talking about me every season? She goes on, watch what happens live. And my fans, they reach out. They're like, Margaret is such a joke. She just called you a stain on New Jersey. Stain? A stain? Yeah. I, mean, I was the life of Jersey. Yeah. And she's. If I wasn't. If I wasn't, why is it that I can't leave my house without somebody stopping me seven years right. later? Yeah. What housewives leaves the show and still everywhere you go, you were the funniest. I love you. You're the great. Can I give you a hug, Siggy? I love when you do that dance. When you walked into New York Prime, that was like a hello dolly scene. I'm like, honey, that yeah. scene is fake. I don't walk into a <laughs> restaurant going, I'm here to people. Who gives a shit if you're here? You don't know it. Well, who does that? Yeah. And it was. Whatever. Now I'm just happy that I'm able to speak out about yeah. it. You can tell how it's yeah, funny. because I mean, we didn't even know half the things that you were saying too, and like well, we, we feel like we kind of we kind of get certain things, and we can like know that this is fake. With that, we did not know at all. Well, well Chantel, I have email messages that went to James Leonard from our Boca Tree. James, I'm drowning. I'm drowning here. They are coming at me every day. Now, how do you know that they're coming at you? It's I'm trying to so you guys understand. So when you're filming a scene and you know that they're doing a memorial for Teresa's mom and then the producers are saying, how do you now they're coming and they want to get reactions. Right. How do you feel about Margaret doing a, a memorial for Teresa's mom? And me and Dolores have to respond to that. That's how you get a storyline going. Yeah. yeah. And then when we went, I, I took him over to my best friend, Lori Consker's house. Lori Consker, her husband's a number one OBGYN. She's got a beautiful house, negative edge pool and tennis courts. So how do I know that they're coming at me while they're all playing tennis? I had to have a scene with Lori, Lori, who doesn't want to be on Housewives, how I felt, you know, and I'm like, Lori, and I'm crying. I'm crying the whole time because I know I'm being set up. Yeah. I know I'm being set up. You I know I'm being set up. And yeah. I have to continue filming. I signed a, I wanted to like run. I'm like, come on. When you don't need to work and you could get up every day, who would sign up for this noise? Yeah. Who? yeah. I, unless you have a brand and I keep on going back to somebody as brilliant as Bethany, you have a brand, you make money off the show. Great. None of these girls make money off the show. None of them. Not chompers drinking her drink out of a can. Who the hell drinks out of a can? I mean, who goes and says, hi, I'd like to drink out of a can? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 not, it's, it's hysterical. Nobody today is doing it. They must film the show because they need those paychecks. And another thing is they are not allowed to respond to me. 
they get fined. They are not allowed to do podcasts. Most of them have to have permission. They are getting fined $15,000, $25,000. I think it's hysterical. So Why does Bravo do that? Why are they trying to control what they can say and can't say? I mean, you do the show. You're getting paid for that. Why are you now being controlled and told what you can and can't do outside of the show? Right, because it's more like that's how communism is run. So yeah. not only do we have you housewives for 60 grand and friends of the show make zero. <gasps> they do? Zero. Zero. No way. Zero. Wow. I'll introduce you. you want, do you want me to introduce you to Kim D? Yeah. They use that poor girl to make her a villain. Edited her. And, and I'm not defending Kim D. I'm not. Kim she D loved was, it though. What? She loved it. Like she, no, no, no. she loved it because yeah. Kim D, listen, Kim D needs the money. Yeah. And Kim D is a housewife fan. She yeah. loves Andy. She loves the franchise. And I'd say, Kim, you're letting them edit you in some scenarios where that didn't even happen. She goes, I know, but unless Siggy, you don't need to show. I do. Yeah. That I do interview her. She'll, she'll vouch for everything I'm saying, yeah. but now she didn't make any money. I said, Kim, now they have a new villain who's able to do anything that they whisper in her ear and they have to pay her. They were better off with you. They didn't have to pay you anything. Friends of the show make zero, zero. I repeat oh. Z wow. E R O. Wow. Crazy. Right. So now you guys have a little bit of, 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 I mean, what really goes on and how, if you do not kiss ass, 